Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Boy, it's been a long winter. Um, as you kind of noticed, we haven't really done much filming this winter just for the simple fact that there's just not enough interesting stuff going on here in the off season. I mean, you know, changing oil and piddly stuff like that. I didn't want to bore you guys to death with that kind of stuff. But uh, things are kind of starting to come together. Going to happen here for long, I think. So thought we'd go ahead and fire it back up. Um, you guys have probably seen the podcast on the channel. Uh, that was just kind of a fill-in for this winter since we weren't dropping any videos. If you want to keep listening to that podcast, it's on all the major players, uh, Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, a whole list of them. So just go over there and check out Straightforward Farming and it'll come up because there's a few podcasts that are on there that didn't make it to YouTube. So it's kind of a mishmash of things there. So go check it out if you want to. Uh, got some new equipment coming up this season we're going to show you. Uh, you've seen our planter there last fall there, I think, when we went and picked it up. Uh, it's back out at John Deere, took it out there. They always like to run the meters on them, check them over real good. Even though it's new, they still want to, you know, make sure there's no issues or anything before you take it to the field. So, uh, and we was having an air conditioner problem with the tractor too, so they got that fixed. So hopefully here in the next day or two, we can go pick it up. Uh, bought another sunflower mulch finisher this winter, just identical to the one we had. Uh, I may try to get it out later on today, uh, kind of, you know, do some odds and ends on it, check it over real good, make sure it's ready to go. But uh, yeah, right now we're busy unloading seed. Our seed order come in today. So uh, we're getting, getting busy getting it unloaded. Uh, we still got a little bit more to get in from decal, but we got all of our Pioneer in today. So we're unloading it. So come along and I'll show you how it's done. So I know there's some people watching this who maybe grew up on farms, but you know, haven't farmed in years now. And I'll kind of show you how this works on this seed. So these are your standard bags of seed corn. They're gonna weigh anywhere from, you know, 40 to 60 pounds, some smaller, some bigger, probably just like what they had when you was a kid. Now we don't get much in 50 pound bags anymore because we got that center fill planter. And that's a long way time you carry them up the stairs to the top and dump them in. You know, it ain't like the old box planters where they was on the ground, you just back your pickup up and dump them all in. You know, these you gotta carry up a stairway and dump them in big tanks and it's kind of a pain, especially when you got 30, 40, 50 bags. So, uh, depending on the company, some companies are different, but a box of corn, like I was unloading with the tractor, then we'll have anywhere from 40 to 50 units in them. And a unit is a bag. So, like this out here on the tractor, let me show you. I'll have to go out and look, but that box on the front of the tractor has either got 40 or 50 bags of seed corn in it. So you can't order them boxes of corn and say, well, I only want 20 bags in it. They don't do that. It's either 40 or 50. <clears throat> so as what we'll do on these 50 pound bags is once we get one of these big boxes empty, then we'll dump that corn in that box and auger it into the planter so we're not having to carry it up there so far. And usually that's how it comes out. I mean, you're never gonna hit 
hit it just right to where your entire crop comes out to exactly you know 80 bags or you know something that's divisible by 40 or 50 it's it's never going to work that way so we'll just uh dump them in a big box and auger it in that way so you see down here where it says slide gate that's how you open these boxes right here you flip that little lever and then you pull that out and that'll release the corn out of that box now there's a few different kinds of these seed tenders uh you've probably seen the kind that look like a big hopper and they've got a conveyor on them and you just dump those boxes into that hopper and then that holds the seed until you get it to the planter and then it conveyors it into the planter. Now ours is a little bit different. On ours, we'll just pick that box up and we'll set it right here. You take these lids off. You see it's got an auger in it. And you just set that box on here and every, all the controls will be on this side. And so I got to be kind of methodical how I set mine up here when I set them in the shed and everything because I during farming time I just want to be able to pull into the shed pick it up and set it on the tender I don't want to have to set them down on the ground and be spinning them and rotating them and all that stuff you know so you want to be methodical about how you put them in the shed so that slide gate is always away from the tractor so it's what you do after you set that on here I set them on from that side and then the slide gate will be right here so I just reach over which actually, shoot, it probably won't even be that far in. You just reach over and crack the slide, and it'll auger it down through there. And then when this auger's folded out, into the planter. This right here is our talc dispenser. So you can see that hose. So as the seed comes by, it's dropping talc on it. This is the talc we run here. We buy it at our, at our local John Deere dealer. That talc is more or less just a lubricant because all this seed is treated, and that treatment is kind of gritty, if you will. So that talc, as it goes by, it sprinkles talc on it, and that just and it's basically just baby powder in a sense. Some guys have to run graphite. Some guys have to run graphite and talc. Um, on our John Deere planter, we can get by with just talc. And so that just makes the seed kind of a little bit more slippery so it doesn't get plugged up in your planter somewhere, being that it's blowing it through hoses and stuff like that. It just helps the seed stay moving a little better. Okay, so I'll set these two boxes on the tender and show you how this works. Once you get your boxes set on, you come over and you throw this lever right here. You see them teeth come up? That's what locks are on. Then they won't come off during transport. We got some more corn coming from DeKalb, so I'll set a box of DeKalb here on the back. But it's not here yet, so we'll have to wait. Those boxes are waterproof. Um, you know, there's no issue if it rains. now. We don't make a habit of leaving them set out in bad storms if it's windy or, you know, really raining hard. I mean, it shouldn't hurt nothing, but sometimes them lids can get a little loose from driving, you know, 60 mile an hour down the road. And not saying they would never leak, and it's just too much money to, you know, take a chance on. But, uh, you know, if you're planting somewhere and the rain comes up and you get caught in the rain, it it's not supposed to hurt it. And we've never had trouble with any leaking or anything. So that's that's a plus. You know, back in the old days with 50 pound bags, you always had to have a tarp or hurry up and get the seed to the shed. So that makes it nice being in boxes like that. Now these boxes are all soybeans here. I had to stack them a little bit different this year because there's only two different numbers of soybeans, but I treated all of my soybeans and Kevin didn't treat any of his. So I had to kind of segregate them so we get the right box once we're in the field right box going on the right farm. Then every box, whether it's corn or soybeans, will tell you everything about it. So these are soybeans, 3.8 Pioneer. That's the maturity on them. 3,180 seeds in a pound, 44.1 pounds per unit. These are treated, so they actually did custom fill these. So I'll have to run the numbers. They writ they've got it written on some of them if there's 40 or 50 units in them or whatever they've got. So that's where you go when you're filling your planter to get all your information. They've got phone apps where you can scan barcodes and stuff and tell you everything else about them. But like here, it'll tell you these come from the state of Illinois. They were tested March of 21, 90% germ, all that good stuff. Well, we got all of our seed delivered and 
put away there the other day. I spent all day yesterday working on a grain bin and then tinkering with the backhoe where we've got a ditching bucket that they sent, uh, we was gonna put on it, but it turns out it's the wrong bucket. They had it mislabeled on the website, so uh, that's a whole nother fiasco in and of itself. So, got the planter home. Uh, today I'm gonna go out and we gotta change the orifices for the fertilizer, the liquid fertilizer. So, uh, I'll show you how we put them in. We're gonna try to calibrate the scale. And other than that, I think it's pretty well ready to go. So the planter we had before this, it had a scale on it as well, but it had a digital readout here in the cab. You couldn't change any of the settings or push any buttons. That's all done back on the planter, but it just had a digital readout in here so I could tell going through the field how much seed I had left. That way if you're planting and somebody calls and says, hey, how much seed you got or when do I need to be there with the seed, you know, I can just look up and well, I've got, you know, thousand pounds left or whatever versus back there where I can't see it. Well, this new scale, it's all wireless. You can't put a, another readout here in the cab from the factory. You gotta have like an iPad or a phone or whatever. So I'm gonna, I went and bought a little, it ain't an iPad, it's just a little tablet of some sort. So I'm gonna mount it in here then. So going through the field, I can see what I've got for seed in the planter. But we'll run back and see if we can get this dude calibrated. Okay, so the way this works is when I step on here, that should say about 215 pounds, roughly. So 225, that's pretty close, but I may just calibrate it to get it right on the money. Okay, so she's showing about 55 pounds. That bag of corn weighs 54 pounds. So that's right on the money because that, that scale only reads in increments of five. So I think we're good to go. All right, so we got the tablet mounted. No big deal. Now I gotta admit, I'm not a fan of having to have tablets and shit in tractors like that. I wish they would have just made that where you just plug the old display right into it and be done with it because now that's just one more thing that's going to need updated or go wrong or whatever. So um, in my opinion, that was a major step backwards. I like Scale Tech, got good products. Uh, their scales are hand da hands down the best in my opinion, but in my opinion also that was a major step backwards. So my opinion's worth what you paid for. it. Okay, these are the orifices for the liquid fertilizer. Now this is going to be a little bit different this year. We got to back our rate down. Used to be our 10340 was two inches beside and two inches below the seed. Now it's going in furrow. So if you run too much, it'll burn the seed. Now, the way you change these is pretty darn simple. They send you these handy dandy pliers like this. Just stick it in, pop that end off. Stick it in there and pop that one off. That's it. Then you come over. Grab your new one, slide him in, and that's it. These only go in the corn rows because we're not putting liquid fertilizer on the soybean rows. So just 16 corn rows get these orifices. And once we put these in, they'll probably never be changed. Um, it's pretty trouble free, don't ever seem to have much trouble. So every now and again, you may plug one, but that's a pretty rare occasion. There's screens up on the tank uh, that's screening all the liquid as it's coming out. So. Uh, we had some trouble in the past. We had a steel fitting that come that away from the factory, gave us some pits. It was getting little flakes of rust and plugging them orifices. Once we figured out what it was and changed it over to stainless, then it was fine. But this new planter's plastic. So once we put these green ones in, odds are they'll be here for several years. We'll never take them out. Now this is your pump up here that pumps all that liquid. Now it's a ground drive, so it's got a little wheel here that rests on your tire. So as you're going through the field and your tire spins, that's spinning this and making her pump. Uh, those old John Blue pumps are deadly accurate, uh, used in a lot of applications. Uh, a lot of anhydrous equipment used to have them. I think a lot of that's went to Raven monitors now, but uh, they're really good pumps. Accurate as hell. Then here's your chart over here. So whatever rate you're gonna run, then that'll tell you what color of orifice you need. Gray, black, yellow, on up the line there. Now in the past, when we were two by two, we were running about six gallon to the acre of 10340. Now that we're in furrow, we're gonna have to back that down. We're gonna be between four and four and a half gallon to the acre. Cause like I said earlier, uh, that stuff's hot and it can burn the roots of the corn once it starts sprouting. So being as you're in furrow, you gotta back her down a little bit. Yeah. 
I guess I could show you two on these orifices. They can go in either way. There's no right or wrong, but there's a little tiny hole in there. I don't know if you'll ever see that on camera. Is what that does is it regulates your pressure because once you start getting down to lower rates, you got to have pressure behind it to get it out of your system to make it meter accurately. Most of the rate is done with that pump. I mean, I'm not saying these orifices won't change it ever so slight, but these have more to do with pressure of getting it down into the ground over the actual rate of what you're putting on. Well, I got the orifices all changed. I'm going to run about 20 gallon of water in that liquid fertilizer system and look for any leaks or things like that. You never know being new like that. Sometimes they forget to tighten stuff or you just never know. So the last thing I want to do is get to the field and have a bunch of 1034-0 all over a brand new planter. Now I should note for some of you that ain't been around this stuff, when I go to fill this with liquid fertilizer, I won't fill it from the top like that. I just done that because it was a garden hose to put water in it. When we go to fill it with fertilizer, we'll fill it right here with a quick coupler. We'll have a big 1500 gallon tank with a pump on it and it'll pump it in through this big line here. Well, it looks like everything is good to go on the liquid fertilizer. Uh, no leaks anywhere, got it all primed up and seems to be working good. So I think we're gonna call that a success. Uh, the one thing I did find was my markers, which we don't use markers a whole lot being on auto steer, but you know, I use them when I'm doing end rows or sometimes you get in little patches where just as quick to use the markers as it is auto steer. So I'll use them, but uh, they work fine in manual mode, but they don't work in automatic mode. Only one side does. So it's probably a switch or a wire somewhere. So deer's gonna come out and see if they can figure out what that is and see if we can get it fixed. Well, I had no intentions of making a full blown video this week. I was just gonna kind of update everybody as to what was going on, but one thing led to another and here we are. So I'm gonna cut it off here. Uh, today's Good Friday uh, with a little bit of luck. Hopefully next week we'll get in the field. There is a chance of rain, uh, I think Tuesday night into Wednesday. So if we get that, then that'll put us out for at least all the next week and maybe part of the next. We'll just have to see. But uh, got some real nice weather coming up here over the weekend. Going to be in the 70s, high winds. So that's just what we need. Now if we can hold this rain off, we'll be ready to go. So hopefully the next video you guys see, we'll be planting some corn or beans or whatever we do. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time.